One of the potentials of artificial intelligence is to fully imitate human behavior in the digital world. Combined with hyperreality, a perfect AI character would be indistinguishable from a human being. But more importantly, it's all about their use, so they can range from anything, including a psychologist to an interactive life partner. So yes, in the very short term future, we will probably see people getting married to digital characters, which is a little bit weird. So for this video, I'm going to stay away from consciousness because we do not have a universal agreement on what that really is. And I'm going to focus on a theory of mind AI, which understands the needs of other intelligent entities. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky subject because there are endless traits which would help AI seem more human. But I think we can all agree that we're going to need advancements in machine learning. And this character is going to have to have very strong speech recognition language processing, visual perception, and even complex movement. This is not even covering the abilities of emotional replication and the ability to think for itself, so to speak. Now, these are two very important traits which would help make the character more likable and more believable. I will talk about these two traits and how to develop that with a different type of CPU architecture. But for now, let's break the development of an AR character down into subcategories. And let's look at the first subcategory, which is the appearance of the character. One of the first steps to creating an AI avatar is actually making the model. Now, we do have the framework for creating digital characters, and we can already create pretty realistic avatars, which tracks the human user's movements and facial expressions. This is combined with a motion capture system, so the character can be animated in real time. As of right now, this requires a lot of resources, and it's expensive but it does work for high-end applications. Now, that might seem a little bit meaningless because you always need a human user there to replicate the movements, but if you used machine learning, you might be able to create a digital character which learns these movements and then actually moves for itself. However, you still need to create a model in the 3D digital world, and there are a few different ways to do this. Now, there is a really good technology out there which can utilize three-dimensional scans from real people and then generate compatible synthetic models which look pretty realistic. The NVIDIA Face Creator is an excellent example of this method, and it's pretty difficult to distinguish faces from real people, even though it's really GPU intensive. This is also not just limited to lifelike characters, and a style-based generator can actually even make anime characters. So basically, you can use your video card to create the next Wafu character. Now, we're talking about two-dimensional modeling technology here, so very basic. But there is new software coming out which can do this three-dimensionally, which is very impressive. One of my favorite programs out there is the Headshot plugin. And this can be used to generate 3D digital humans from one photograph. This model can then be animated, we're talking basic animation here, for limp sync, facial expression, and body movements. But it still looks really promising, and it's going to help make 3D modeling a little bit easier. Ultimately, the 3D modeling riddle is already being solved, and we do have a pretty good idea on how to build the shell of a digital AI avatar. The only downside to these programs is that it's very hard to imitate human-like locomotion. And once again, I think it's going to come down to machine learning to replicate human-like movement. Now we are going to cover the second vital trait of an AI avatar, and that is speech recognition and language processing. Now, this is a really tricky thing, so I broke this down into three different levels. The first level is basic speech recognition, which would include voice user interface. This is already being used in everyday life, but it's not perfected because it's not 100% accurate in recognizing accent, pronunciation, pitch, and speed. Level 2 would include identifying facial expression along with speech which would better classify a person's emotion and attention to a higher degree of accuracy. This is already being developed by firms like Effectiva, and they have developed a product which actually scans driver's faces to identify their mood. Once again, this is based on machine learning, and its algorithms are trained on 9.5 million faces, representing about 5 billion facial frames. Hopefully the system does not take control over your car when you get road rage. But an avatar which can actually identify your mood would be very good because it would be able to know how to talk to you. Finally, we have the level 3 which is a system that can remember your specific cues, combine facial and voice recognition to a high degree of accuracy. So for example, the system would actually know if you are being sarcastic based on your personality traits. I don't think level 3 is too far away and deep neural networks are tremendously improving all the time. 
And this is where it gets complicated because we are talking about theoretical stuff now. Well, what is personal? And how do we set those rules? At some point, you need advanced machine learning which actually studies the user, which is highly dependent on processing power. Current GPUs and CPUs have limited performance, so you need a different type of architecture for creating a responsive avatar. And that leads me into the third trait, which is neuromorphic computing. This is where I'm going to highly reinforce the idea that we need to build an AI avatar around this type of computing, because this acts more like the human mind. It tries to simulate how the brain works in relation to calculation and energy consumption. And as a fun fact, neuromorphic chips are expected to replace graphic processing units and actually become the predominant computing architecture for new advanced forms of artificial intelligence. So the biggest advantage here is that the machine learning models which are running on neuromorphic computers only need a fraction of the data when compared to running on traditional hardware. Basic neuromorphic computing chips are doing some pretty neat things right now. For example, Singapore University paired artificial skin with a low high chip. It's over a thousand times more responsive than the human nervous system, and it's capable of identifying the shape, texture, and hardness of objects. The team also added a camera to the robot to classify containers filled with different amounts of liquid. The robot processed this data 21% faster than the best performing GPU on the market, while using 45 times less power. Ultimately, neuromorphic chips are going to be used in the next wave of robotics and AI avatars. As a conclusion to this video, I talked about three crucial traits to an AI avatar. The first would be an accurate model, which replicates human locomotion to a high degree of accuracy. The second would be speech recognition and language processing. This can be combined with facial expression identification, and it sort of intertwines with emotional replication. The third is neuromorphic computing, and this is probably the most important trait because this would be able to have very advanced machine learning models. So it would be able to replicate human behavior, but more importantly, it's going to give the illusion that it's thinking for itself. So there it is. That's my best analysis of how we can actually build an AI avatar. But more importantly, I want to hear from you guys about how we can actually build one of these characters. So once again, thanks for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.